Hi guys, I am Trisha with Insectopia here to talk to you about diving beetles. These beetles are in the family Dytiscidae and are extremely widespread. Dytiscidae is derived from the Greek dytikos, meaning able to dive. They can be found as far north as the Canadian Arctic and as far south as the sub-Antarctic South Georgia Island. Today, we will be talking about a mating war that has been occurring throughout time over generations. Before we go much further, there is something that I want to share with you. Even though diving beetles are aquatic, they cannot breathe underwater. They need to break the water surface to grab an air bubble and they will swim underwater breathing from that single air bubble. Once the bubble is depleted, they need to resurface to get another bubble. Normally, it is mutually beneficial for males and females of the same species to mate. Therefore, mating rituals in most species are about impressing the other, whether it be with beautiful colors or by showing off their strength. In diving beetles, mating occurs underwater and it isn't about impressing the female. The male beetles will hold the females under the water until they are done mating. Therefore, the female beetle needs to be able to break away free from copulation so that she can return to the surface and acquire another air bubble if needed. It is also beneficial for the male to continue copulating for a long period of time so that he has the highest success in mating. Mating has been observed to occur anywhere from a couple minutes up to two or three days. So let's take a look at this mating war. Keep in mind these changes in species happen through evolution and natural selection and not overnight. You see, we have the male on the top and the female on the bottom. Their hind legs are modified for swimming, making them both pretty quick. How can he hold on to her underwater when she is moving so fast? Aha! Suction cups! Now the male can hold on to the female when she is trying to get away. The males have developed suction cups on their front pair of legs to hold on to the female's back. How is she going to get out of this? Is there a way to make the male's grip less powerful? Grooves. Now the female has grooves on her back that will break the suction of the males. But the males still aren't done fighting back. They have developed miniature suction pads at the same distance as the female's grooves. When you look at the grooves on the female's back and compare it to the male's suction cups of the same species, they will match. What is the female's next move? We do not know yet. Once the female is mated, she will start laying eggs. Depending on the species, she will lay just a few eggs, up to hundreds, and she will either scatter the eggs on the substrate, attach them to aquatic vegetation, or insert them into aquatic vegetation. What hatches from the egg is a larva, also known as a water tiger, and those are for another time. Here are a couple of pictures of what diving beetles look like in real life. Thank you for listening. If you have questions about diving beetles or a thought on what the female's next adaptation might be, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one.